Hey everyone, Dr. Munger here. As you know that insulin in our body, it is synthesized and secreted by beta cells of pancreas. Now in this video, I will be explaining you what is the mechanism of insulin release from beta cells of pancreas. Now, uh, beta cells of pancreas, they are going to express a uh, glucose uh, transporters, uh, that is a GLUT2 transporters. Now, these GLUT2 transporters, they are going to allow glucose in. So, glucose, it, is, it will be getting into the beta cells of pancreas whenever blood glucose level is more than 3.9 millimoles per liter. So, how much is more than 3.9 millimoles per liter? So, 3.9 millimoles per liter, it, is, it comes around 70 milligrams per deciliter of blood. So, the conversion factor here from millimoles into milligrams per deciliter is 18. For every 1 millimole of glucose, you can you put 18 number that is in milligrams per deciliter. Anyway, when the blood glucose is more than 70 milligram per deciliter or more than 3.9 millimoles per liter, glucose gets into the beta cells of pancreas and in the beta cells of pancreas, glucose will undergo glycolysis process and makes pyruvate. Pyruvate will undergo TCA cycle and um, sorry, pyruvate is converted into acetyl CoA. Further, it is getting into TCA cycle and uh, completely oxidized into carbon dioxide. So, during this process in TCA cycle, you get NADH, FADH2 and uh, GTP. Now, NADH plus H plus and FADH2, uh, they get into electron transport chain and will make ATPs. That means when glycolysis is going on, complete oxidation of glucose is going on in the beta cells of pancreas, there will be rise in ATPs, ADP ratio. So, that means ATP levels will be much higher then ADP level. So, more ATPs are increased and these ATPs, what they will do? So, ATPs will go and bind to ATP sensitive potassium channel. These ATPs will go and bind to ATP sensitive potassium channel. So, this particular uh, transporter that I have written here is uh, ATP sensitive potassium channel. What is this ATP sensitive potassium channel? Normally under basal condition when the blood glucose level is uh, not at high concentration, so usually this uh, ATP sensitive potassium channel, it is going to transport potassium out of the beta cells into the extracellular matrix. So outflow of potassium will be going on under basal condition when the blood glucose level is low. So potassiums are going out of the beta cell into the extracellular matrix. Now, Whenever uh, glucose gets in, uh, undergoing oxidation, making lot of ATPs and these ATPs will go and bind to ATP sensitive potassium channel. When that happens, so this potassium channel will close. Okay, and also note that potassium channel has got uh, sulfonylurea subunits. Sulfonylureas are uh, a group of drugs which are used in treatment of diabetes mellitus. Sulfonylurea will bind to sulfonylurea subunit and that will also block the potassium channel. Anyway, I am going to come to that point uh, towards the end. Now, ATP is binding to ATP sensitive potassium channel. You are closing the potassium channel there. That is why the, uh, this particular channel is referred as ATP sensitive potassium channel. It is there in the name. Who is the regulator of uh, potassium channel in the beta cells of pancreas? It is the ATPs. Anyway, so on the, once the ATP binds here, potassium channel is closed. That means there will be more potassium in the cell, means in the beta cell. So more positive charges are elevated here or increased. That will lead to depolarization of membrane. So membrane depolarization occurs here. So when the membrane depolarization occurs, so this is a voltage change here, voltage uh, change in the voltage of the membrane. So because of this change in the voltage of the membrane, there is another channel here called voltage gated calcium channel. So they respond to the change in the voltage. So voltage gated calcium channel, so what it does, it will allow calcium to move into the beta cells of pancreas. So calcium move in now. So as the calcium enters in, so the calcium concentration increases 
within the beta cell sub pancreas and this calcium what it does it is going to cause the secretory granules which contains insulin uh, c peptide and amyl highlight amyloid polypeptide so this is the secretory granule already secrete means uh, the preformed insulin is there in the secretory granules so calcium will move the secretory granule to go and fuse with the membrane so there will be exocytosis going on now so that means there will be release of insulin insulin is released along with the insulin c peptide is released here and along with the c peptide and insulin iapp is also released that is highlight highlight amyloid polypeptide we don't know for sure what is the function of highlight amyloid polypeptide C peptide it is coming from pre pro insulin converted to pro insulin and pro insulin is broken down into insulin and C peptide. For every uh, one molecule of C peptide, you get a molecule of insulin. So, the C peptide it is useful in the measurement of uh, insulin whenever a person is taking uh, exogenous insulin and you want to know how much is the ins uh, endogenous insulin that is produced by the pancreas during that time instead of uh, measuring insulin. You got to measure C peptide because C peptide will every one molecule of insulin coming in, one molecule of C peptide is released. So that will give you an idea how much of endogenous insulin production is going on, especially when the person is taking a similar recombinant uh, human insulin for exogenous by exogenous sources. So it will differentiate endogenous and exogenous insulin there. So, in terms of quantity, so if you can measure C peptide there. So, this is how insulin is released in response to elevated levels of glucose. So, glucose enters, glycolysis occurs, uh, completely break down into carbon dioxide, ATP levels increase, ATP sensitive potassium channel is closed, membrane depolarization occurs, voltage gated calcium channel will open up, calcium levels will increase, and that calcium will move this secretory granules causing exocytosis of insulin, C-peptide, highlight amyloid polypeptide. Okay. Now, this is one of the major mechanism of insulin release from beta cell sub pancreas. But note that insulin glucose is not the only uh, uh, factor that allows insulin release from beta cell sub pancreas. Proteins that is amino acids, amino acids coming from protein digestion, especially arginine, glycine, alanine, they can also help in the release of insulin from beta cell sub pancreas by the similar mechanism like that of glucose and the vagus nerve stimulation in the gastrointestinal tract releasing acetylcholine. Acetylcholine will also release insulin from beta cell sub pancreas and uh, gastrointestinal hormones, uh, especially incretins. And one of the powerful incretin is a glucagon like peptide 1. So, incretins. Incretin is a gastrointestinal hormone, so and a powerful incretin is GLP-1, that is glucagon-like peptide 1. So, incretins, they will go and bind to G-protein coupled receptors, which are uh, serpentine receptors. So, G-protein coupled receptors are serpentine receptor, and you know G-protein coupled receptors, they are going to when the incretin, that is GLP-1, binds to incretin receptor there. So, it is going to activate adenyl acyclase and adenyl acyclase furthermore it is going to increase cyclic AMP levels. So, there will be increase in cyclic AMP and this cyclic AMP it is going to act synergistically with calcium and release insulin, C-peptide and IAPP from the secretory granules. That means when we consume food there will be release of incretins in the gastrointestinal tract and these are endocrine hormones. They will go and bind to incretin receptors on the beta cell sub pancreas and increase cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP works along with the calcium because glucose mediated calcium release here. So, both cyclic AMP and calcium they work together synergistically to release more and more insulin and C-peptide and IAPP from secretory granules. So, this is why uh, a difference of like if the person is taking glucose orally and see how much insulin is released and compare that if uh, if you give intravenous glucose and see how much insulin is released so uh, oral glucose release comparatively more insulin 
uh, than intravenous glucose because oral glucose uses two mechanisms that is incretin mediated mechanism that is KKMP and the glucose mediated calcium mechanism so they both work together to release more insulin Agar as an intravenous glucose so only glucose mechanism is used and you are not getting incretin mechanism because it is a intravenous you are getting incretins only when you take a glucose or carbohydrate orally so if you eat food not necessarily carbohydrate you can yeah, when you eat food there will be release of incretins and incretin will make sure that some of the insulin is released so overall eating food itself will stimulate release of insulin from beta cells of pancreas so quantitatively it can vary from carbohydrates proteins fats or something but uh, otherwise eating food itself because they will release incretin in response to means the gastrointestinal tract will release incretin in response to food okay so coming to a little bit about uh, sulfonylurea sulfonylurea are on the class of drugs which are used in treatment of diabetes mellitus so what sulfonylurea does so sulfonylurea will go and bind to sulfonylurea receptor here on the potassium channel and close the potassium channel so when the potassium channel is closed so there will be depolarization calcium level uh, calcium will come in and the calcium levels will increase and will lead to exocytosis of insulin c peptide and iapp that's why uh, sulfonylurea they act just like uh, glucose mediated insulin release mechanism so this is all about uh, mechanism of insulin release from the beta cells of pancreas. I hope this video has helped you in understanding this concept. Make sure you click the subscription button down there so, so that you get a regular update whenever I make uh, videos like this. So and also if you have any questions so let me know that question in the comment section below. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, see you in my next video. Till then take care.